Hello guys and welcome back to this HTTP tutorial. In this lecture, we are going to take a look at HTTP request methods to better understand what they are, how they work in the whole HTTP process and learning about them, understand how they can exactly be useful. So the HTTP request methods are basically used to indicate the desired action to be performed for a given resource that is specified, so we can make a better idea as to what we are dealing with here. Let's list now all these methods. So the main HTTP methods that you will run into are going to be, first of all, the HTTP request method get. And this get method is used to retrieve the data of a resource that is probably identified by an ID parameter or general list that contains all the elements of that given resource. So, for example, if a given URL has at the end of its path slash users, it is going to retrieve the entire list of users that is available in the database of that web server. But if it is slash users slash and then a number, which would be the ID of that user, it is only going to retrieve the resource that is an user identified by that respective ID that you entered into the URL. A few notes on the get request are that they can be cached and they can also be bookmarked. They remain in the browsing history after you access them as you speak and should never be used when dealing with sensitive data. But also talking about them, they have some restrictions regarding the length and as I've said, when defining them, they only are used to retrieve the data and not modify it in any shape or form. Next in line, we have the post HTTP request method and the post method creates a new resource. So what it does, it submits a new entity to the specified resource. So for example, in the context of users, it will create a new user with a new ID. And some observations here when it comes to post methods are first of all that Unlike the get methods, they cannot be cached and second, not even bookmarked or they do not remain into the history of the browser. They do not have any restrictions on the length. So for example, the get method is when you are trying to access a website and you're just trying to see it and that sticks in the history of your web browser. But when it comes to post and creating a resource that will not stick into the history of your browser. So now we saw what methods we can do in order to retrieve or create a new resource. But what about if we want to update an existing request? Well, for that, we have the put request method that, as I said, updates a specified resource. On a broader picking term, what it does is it replaces all, all current representations of the target resource with the request payload. Now, the main difference when it comes to the post and put methods are the results that you will get when repeatedly doing them over and over again. Because while the put method will always produce the same exact result as it updates a resource over and over again, no errors are going to be there. The post method would have side effects if trying to double enter the same entity into the system, either regarding the same ID being entered twice or even if that ID is auto incrementing in the database. You are going to end up with multiple records that have the same ID and that is basically wrong. The last HTTP request method is the delete method, which as the name suggests, it deletes a specified resource and removes an entity from an eventual database. So if you ever come across the CRUD abbreviation, so the CRUD abbreviation, you need to know that it comes from create, read, update, and then delete operations. And going through them again, the create operation is represented by the post request method. The read is represented by the get request method. The update is represented by the put HTTP request. And lastly, the delete is represented by the delete request method. So I hope you guys got something out of it and you understood what HTTP request methods are. And the next time you are going to see one of them, you are going to know what it did and what that naming of it came from. And in the next lecture, we are going to discuss in detail the HTTP responses 
also known as the HTTP status codes that you can receive from web servers within the HTTP protocol. So if that sounds interesting, I look forward to see you guys there. And I would like to thank you for sticking with me up to the end of this lecture.